Hi, you guys. You're here for hot tea. This is my first official YouTube video. And I've been on YouTube in these YouTube streets listening to all of the love and marriage, Huntsville, love and marriage, DC, and all of the gossip. And I just really wanted to go ahead and create my own channel because I have my own opinion. And hopefully you guys stick here with me, subscribe to my channel, like this video, share this video. And let's get right into it. I actually wanted to start with reviewing Love and Marriage DC because it's on right now and it's a lot going on. I didn't give the first season too much. However, this season I've been really tuning in. So we're starting things off late, but we're getting them kicked off nonetheless. So this is Love and Marriage DC season two, episode five. And I got a lot of opinions, so let's just get started. This scene is starting with how they left off on the last episode. I didn't review the last episode. This is my first episode I'm reviewing, of course. So it starts with the family walking into their daughter's home. So like I said, they finish where they left off on the last episode. The family walk in and everyone is basically surprised. Big Jamie feels like it's a setup and little Jamie really already knew it was his family because he said he heard his mom distinctive laugh when his sister opened the door. In his confessional, he basically stated that he was nervous and he didn't know what was next. But everyone nonetheless came upstairs. His dad gave him a really stern handshake. But in my opinion, it just looked like Big Jamie was ready to talk about everything be accountable for what's going on and get through the therapy but we'll talk about that a little bit later and little jamie is kind of looking confused and nervous in the same breath and so the sister basically just tells everyone today we land it all on the table because she's tired of having one-on-one -on -one conversations with all of them and I totally understand being the middleman for family is so draining sometimes. So Big Jamie basically says he didn't come to argue and he basically starts the conversation off taking accountability for where his son is in life because he said his son, his son still lives at home with him. And um, if he can take accountability for that, then his son should be able to take accountability as well, which is what he states to his daughter. And I just want to jump in and say really quick, this is just a sidebar as well. I do not like when people are trying to talk about um, an issue that they have with people and they want to apologize to someone. But, you know, in return, it's like, oh, but this, if that makes any sense. I don't even know if I'm explaining that right. But it's like you can't say, oh, I want to be accountable for my actions when it comes to this, that and a third. But you need to be accountable for this, that and a third, because if you are genuine about it, you just be apologize, be accountable for your end on it. And however the other person receives it, that's just how they receive it. But when you're genuinely accountable about something, it doesn't matter how they receive it because that is just you know you just want to make sure that you are apologetic for your part so I didn't really like that but then on the flip side I do feel like little Jamie kind of takes advantage of his mom's softness um, and I say that because after that Arena says um, she wants to know how they can help him he says nothing really um, he just wants to find something to make money that was his response and, you know, I'm critical about men not being able to articulate themselves. His mom wants to know, you know, how can we help you? Because he claims his family is such a detriment to his health or his mental health. So his mother is genuinely asking, how can we help? And his response is, I don't know, I just need to make money. So it's not necessarily that your family are doing anything to you other than holding you accountable. And you are just basically, you know, sad or frustrated because you're broke, basically. But I don't know. That's kind of how I took that. Because his grandmother then says, um, she said he needs to have it in him to want better for himself, basically. Because he told his mom he didn't know what kind of job he wanted or how he wanted to make the money after he said he didn't know he just wanted to make money. So Big Jamie says he has to want it in himself. Little Jamie thinks it's overwhelming being held accountable for being a lazy excuse maker. And I'm sorry, you guys, that I have to say it like that. But it just seems like it just seems like he plays with his mother's emotions because I think Big Jamie doesn't really go for that. Seems like he is about disciplining his children 
um, in tough love. And I don't knock him for that because that is how a lot of the old school men are. Um, very discipline oriented. So then Big Jamie gets emotional because he wants the best for his son and desires for his children's success. Everyone starts crying because this is a very emotional moment. The family starts talking about mental health and getting into therapy. Big Jamie tells his son he needs therapy or he has to move out. But his therapy isn't all about him. Little Jamie says he doesn't want therapy and starts making himself the victim, saying um, he basically starts making himself the victim, saying it is about him. Um, and he's the bad kid. This is why he do what he do because they make him feel like this when really do they are, you know, just trying to help you break your bad habits. Uh, you know, there, it seems like his daddy is just trying to hold him accountable and, you know, he uses his mental health and things as like, leverage in a sense I don't know that's just kind of how I feel about it I have to kind of like tread lightly with that because I definitely do believe mental health issues are real and you know going to therapy and healing and things like that is very important and very real nonetheless I genuinely think they're at their breaking point and he just needs to grow up after, you know, getting the attention that he desired by walking away, he finally agreed to go to therapy because he walked away, he ran downstairs, the entire family chased him down and coddled him the way they typically do these men that need to just grow up. So, um, and I don't know these people, you guys, personally, but it seems like Big Jamie is right. And Jamie is just a spoiled man child. But again, I don't know them personally. I'm only commenting off what I see off on TV and what they display to us. So after getting the attention he desired by walking away, he finally agreed to therapy. And despite what I may say here on YouTube, I'm actually very proud of him for going out and seeking therapy, despite what, you know, critics like me and you may think and or say of him and his family trials and tribulations. It is extremely important that people go out and seek help and get therapy when it is needed. Okay, so the next scene, child, is a romancipation, okay? Sherelle and Winter are somewhere doing something at a place called Air. I've never been there, don't know what it is. Seems like it's a, you know, luxury restaurant or of some sort. Um, and they are there with an event planner. So I do not have an issue with Winter. I actually enjoy her subtle shade on the show, you know, but winter can be extremely annoying. Like, let's just be honest. And a lot of times I find myself, you know, kind of getting bored by some of her scenes. Not all of them, just a few. Winter looks amazing in her confessional look. And she's basically stating that she wants everybody to come to her emancipation, which is a new age divorce party. Now, Sherelle walks in looking how Winter is looking here. Um, just whatever you can envision Winter is thinking in her head with that look, that is what Sherelle is wearing. <laughs> in my opinion, I think Winter was a bit shocked at the bang combination piece thing. I don't know. This is just not my favorite look by Sherelle. Definitely could have done a lot better. The shade starts, child. And Winter would like Sherelle to invite her people. Now, this was really funny because the event planner is like, and yeah, are you going to invite? And she pauses and she like points her hand or holds her hand out to, you know, I guess tell Winter to finish her statement. And um, Sherelle's like, what people? Girl, Winter looks at Sherelle and says, your people, your football team, <laughs> with this big grin, like BFFR, because not you trying to be shady like you're oh so classy and you're holding a champagne flute like you're a part of the football team. Like, let's be for real. Let's get somebody in here. We can, you know, mess over for real. So Winter in her confessional says she needs Sherelle to agree to bringing the football team to mediate a fun event where they can let their hair down. Sherelle asks if 
she's inviting everyone and how she's and how is that going to work and honestly winner I want to know how that's going to work too when you're addressing them as a football team I think Winter is very beautiful, but sometimes the way she chooses to go about things is like, now, you know, you're the op, like, you know, you want to be, (laughs) you know, you don't want to be their friends. Okay. But you want to fake like you want to be their friends because you have to film with them. You know, you need more airtime, whatever. Spade is a spade. Regardless of the fact, Winter doesn't know how, you know, it's going to work, but Sherelle also says she have... She should have a one-on-one with Ashley because she thinks that they can work things out. They're both mothers and they're both entrepreneurs. Winter psycho crazy self in her confessional says that she thinks her and Ashley are both boss women and they like having the final say. And she thinks that if they can put their differences to the side that they can be best friends. And again, Winter is top tier delusional. Okay, but we love her for that. So then Sherelle starts to talk about her event and says Arena told her that she would bring joy to the event and that she didn't have a problem with her and that she only thinks her husband do, does bad business, but she didn't want to repeat the rest because it would make her mad. And you guys, uh, I just cannot wait to, to talk more about Sherelle. So because... She was an interesting character from start. She's still a very interesting character. She actually did an interview with DJ Richie Sky, which I absolutely loved. And again, I don't know these people personally. I'm just going based off of their characters, right? That they per- that they um, show on the show. But the interview that she did with DJ Richie Sky was very warm. So that's all I'll say. I didn't actually finish it. I will finish it. Um... So, yeah, so Winter says, why would she bring that to her? But they say that she's messy. So Winter is saying like, oh, why would Arena bring that to Sherelle? But they like to say that Winter is messy. Like, Winter, you're absolutely messy. (laughs) So anyways, just to close the scene, um, Winter thinks Arena plays both sides and Sherelle should tread lightly. I think Winter is the last person to even make this observation, but whatever. Okay, so now we're moving on to Quick and Ashley. They just got a phone call confirming um, his street. And they also talk about her book and how much he loves her book. Sidebar, I really love Ashley and Quick's relationship. I think that they are a beautiful couple. I think Ashley is super beautiful. I love how patient Quick is with Ashley because she is absolutely a strong, dominant alpha woman. And I love that about her. However, I do want to say because I didn't review the last episode that she had with her party and her best friend that whole debacle, I totally understood where Quick was coming from as far as trying to make the better judgment for his wife because he didn't want her night to be ruined because we clearly see she would have ruined her night, you know. Um, and But I totally understood Ashley's standpoint when she was like, oh, you don't have any real, real friends. Like, you don't know. You don't know. Like... Oh my gosh, I totally understood stood her because, you know, girls are different. Like we, how we handle ourselves and in our relationships with our friends are completely different. We over check, double check, triple check. Um, And so our emotional bonds with our friends are completely different than men's emotional bonds with their friends. So the way that they choose to deal with conflict and things like that is totally opposite than the way women deal with theirs. So I just wanted to throw that in there. But anyways, you know, he's um, sitting down reading her book. He's like, oh, I just love this book. It's so amazing. She's like, oh, babe, you're gassing me up. He's like, no, seriously, like this book is the one. And I just love that support. So then Quick reveals to Ashley that he was mad at her because they he thought that they told each other everything and he felt like she didn't tell him something. She says what? He says, you didn't tell me that our son got suspended from school. Ashley doesn't really think it's a big deal because someone stole her son's jacket. Quick is upset because he thinks that's how it all starts. That's how black men or men in general are, you know, start going downhill. It starts with one little bad thing and then, you know, it's like a domino effect, basically. So he calls his son downstairs so they can have a conversation. Also, Quick said something that was interesting that I try to genuinely stay away from. And I think people, well, one, I don't have any kids. But I do think people should stay away from comparisons in general. Um, But Quick basically stated that um, 
He felt like little Jamie at some point was a good kid, but, you know, it all started somewhere. You know, he got in trouble here and there, and then, you know, it just trickled down from there. I think to compare your son to another man's son is kind of, you know, counterproductive to the growth of your household and your family because the way another man chooses to raise his children should have nothing to do with the way you choose to raise your son. And a lot of times it doesn't matter how many, you know, good parents a child may have or how many people that are in their life that are completely and, and completely supportive of them. You know, sometimes kids just go down the wrong path and I think that he has to tread lightly when it comes to that topic for sure. So, yeah, completely disagree with comparing your kids to other people's children. Um, However, his son basically sits down and tells him what happened. He says that in school, a guy took his jacket. He went back to get his jacket. Basically, the same thing that Ashley already told him. And Quick basically tells his son, we are all one bad decision away from changing our lives. Don't change your life for the worse. And I thought that was a very, very, very important you know, lesson to teach your son in that moment. Because again, anything could have happened. And I think the examples that he gave were really valid points. I think one of them were like, oh, what if he would have had substances in his bag and you didn't know? And he said that you put him in there. You know, it's plenty of things that could have went wrong, but luckily they didn't. So we get to the next scene with Joy and Sherelle. Joy is walking in and she basically states in her confessional, she doesn't want to be here and she doesn't even know what's the reason for the meeting. And honestly, we will agree toward the end of this meeting. And, and so honestly speaking, Sherelle seems aggressive off the top all the time. Even when she was having the conversation with Winter, when she was explaining what Arena said, it just seemed aggressive. So we have Joy walking in. Arena has her head down into the phone. Joy sits down and, you know, Sherelle decides not to say anything or start the conversation off, even though she's the one that wanted to have the meeting. So it starts awkward and Joy points out, points that out in her um, confessional. She says, this is the most awkward-ish ever. And she also has no idea where it's supposed to go. And again, totally agree. Joy says, I don't have a problem with you. She starts the conversation off saying that to Sherelle. Sherelle claims she doesn't either, but Arena came to her and said, she's telling people, um, well, Arena came, she said, she's telling, I'm sorry, you guys, but she's telling Joy that Arena came to her and she's going around telling people that Joy is saying that her husband is shady and does bad business. She took issue with that and she wouldn't, and she wouldn't appreciate that basically is what she said to Joy. Joy says she never said shady. While Sherelle said she specifically said Arena said shady. We then get a flashback of Joy telling Arena that it was a lot of manipulation and selfishness. And then we get another flashback of Arena telling Sherelle that, you know, he was shady and he does bad business. So in the confessional, Joyce states she didn't specifically say that word, but in her experience, that M, that M effort is shady. Like literally, I couldn't agree more. And so... And so, like I said, I, I agree, you know, that's basically the same thing, but Sherelle wants Joy to tell her what the issue is. And Joy thinks all parties should be included and in, in the conversation because she's playing the middleman when she knew black before her. Now, I think that once Joy said this, this kind of opened my eyes to what type of woman Sherelle really is, right? Because we have people in the world, men and women, to where when they hear certain words, they just cannot, they, they can't understand the context that you put behind it before even seeing the word, if that makes any sense. And so when Joy told Sherelle, Miss Angry, that, hey, you know, I knew black before you. So, you know, us having this conversation, it really wouldn't suffice because that's technically what she was saying. Joy took, not Joy, but Sherelle, I can tell, took issue with that. So Sherelle butts in to say, yeah, but, you know, I know black now. 
as if that would mean anything because you're trying to address this woman about events that happened before you knew black and before you got married to him. So she's right. The issue that she has with black came about before you even met him. So for her to even say, yeah, but, you know, I know black now, it kind of made me think like, wow, you know, as beautiful as Sherelle may be, you know, she may not be wrapped too tight. And, you know, it is what it is. So she then states, and you do know people grow. So after she says, oh, but I know black now and you do know people grow. Like, literally, lady, you're coming to talk to me about something that happened in our past. Even if he's grown or not, the issue remains there. We never move past that moment. So, again, I truly don't understand Sherelle's stance. And women like Sherelle, you really have to be careful with. Women that, you know, go above and beyond and all out the way for men, you know, that are shady, you have to kind of keep them arms reach. That's all I'll say. And that's just my opinion. So Joy says, the band had opportunities to do amazing things. And because his selfishness, after the tour, he decided to make changes using his self as leverage. Sherelle then says, she knows about the ultimatum. So girl, and you know what? This is even more weird because Joy is talking about her experience with him before her. So I don't understand why she's so aggressive about addressing this woman about her business relationship with the man she didn't even know at the time. But the fact that she can even respond and say, but yeah, I know about the ultimatum. Like that's something that he told you. It just seems like um, I'm I'm talking about aggressive because she's so aggressive, but it just seems like Sherelle wants an issue somewhere. She wants an issue. She wants a moment and she thought Joy would be the one she can get that from. But I'm going to just tell you, Joy sat down with a a confidence in a no-ish demeanor Even the most jealous, insecure bully wouldn't be able to sway her or move her in any way, shape, or form. So I really like that about her. Anyways, Joy in the confessional says, Truth is, one month before the tour, two members quit. They discussed having two more members come into the band and and they killed it. Her husband was a rapper and she was a singer. She said they made mumbo sauce what they only what they are today. The only reason that anybody even know who mumbo sauce are is because of those two people. So Joy is seemingly giving them credit and she just seems like an overall real person. So I really am enjoying Joy this season. She then says, um, After the tour, Black wanted to bring two of the members that left back on tour and he used himself as leverage. And he said if they can't bring them back, then he would be leaving. And there you have it. That's shady, you guys. In my opinion, that's shady. So you bring two. So two group members quit because Mumbo Sauce wasn't doing the numbers like they would want. They bring Black and Joy bring two other group members back into the group. Mumbo Sauce created a name for themselves because of those two group members. And because they got all of the hype that they got, now those two group members wanted to come back. Black wanted to bring them back. Joy didn't. Joy said, you know, good riddance. And so that, in my opinion, is shady. What is Sherelle wanting to talk about other than to embarrass herself and her husband further? So Sherelle chimes in and says, but y'all have never talked or sat down and had a conversation. And I just don't understand her stance on this and how she is going to tell this lady what happened as if a shady businessman wouldn't lie to her. Anyways, Joy says, you know what? He had plenty of opportunities to speak on the situation and say X, Y, and Z. So Sherelle then screams, he did to me. And I'm so sorry, y'all, but I just thought like, girl, get real. (laughs) The logic behind her even saying he did to me, woman, he did it to this, to Joy, the lady that he slimed. 
So it doesn't matter that he went and pillow talked with you and told you a bunch of lies. He never held himself accountable to the people that it mattered to. And in her crazy mind, she would say, oh, but it matters to me. Like, psycho. Anyway. She said that he said what he has done to her again as if it would matter. So she, Joy said, wait, stop. Because, because Sherelle is just overly emotional at this point. She's cutting her off. What she's saying is just, it just is not making any sense. And so Miss Nuck, if you buck Sherelle says, don't tell me to stop because she's, she, she's begging for a moment, you guys, because she wants an issue so bad. She's just like, don't tell me to stop. But, you know, Joy is super confident. She exudes confidence, you know, so she ignores her because, you know, stuff like that doesn't move her. And I can tell Sherelle is an extremely insecure woman when it comes to woman, when it comes to her relationship with black. I can just tell it's written all over her. Um, But she ignores her and she asks, what is it that you that you want? What issue do you have with me personally? Because I'm trying to find out too. <laughs> Sherelle then says, I can't be, I cannot be in a space with somebody that talks about my husband in a way that Arena said that you talked about my husband. And I don't really see what would, where was the lie? You know what I'm saying? Where was the lie? Because she even co-signed that the man gave the, her an ultimatum. So lady, why are we here? Okay, why are we here? Um, but whatever. So Joy is sitting looking at her like, girl, be for real. Like, be so for real. And I couldn't agree more. Like, Joy got the look we all have. So Sherelle in her confessional says if she's going to be in a space with Joy, then she does care about what she's saying about her husband because she's not going to be kicking king in your face and you don't like my husband. Like, lady, first of all, nobody has to like y'all to be cordial. Like, she's just seems so off. Like, everything isn't there. And... You don't even have to kiki with everyone around you. Everybody don't kiki with everybody around them. So I don't even understand that point that she made. I just don't understand her stance. It just seems like she wants to have a beef or she just has undercover pressure with this woman over pillow talk. And that's just in my opinion. So then Joy says, I'll say perhaps things got lost in translation. And that's really what it is. Sherelle says, okay, well, I just need needed clarity on this because those words she spoke really pissed me off like why would you need clarity on that if you ain't insecure like you know that man over there lying to you anyways um and I'm like what words (laughs) am I missing something though seriously what words were really used other than the fact that your husband was shady you know what I mean So Sherelle then says, um, we didn't have to do this, but she's going to talk to Arena. And I agree. Not about talking to Arena, though, because I do think you're thirsty. Just move on. You really didn't have to have the conversation, but you did it because you're thirsty. So Joy says in her confessional, this was so pointless. And girl, girl, we all agree. She then says this was probably the meanest thing she's ever said, but clarity is not her concern and everyone needs to go in their corners and out of her life and keep people name out of their mouth. Was that shade? Because I hope it wasn't shade to Arena, but that was that scene. Okay, you guys, so I am going to speed past this scene kind of fast because I don't want this video to be too long. And this is also going to be the last scene for this video. And I'll go over the fight in a completely separate video to break it down completely. Because I do feel like it's a lot of things to break down in that whole fight scene alone. So anyways, um, in this scene, we are entering therapy with the Jamies. Big Jamie walks in to meet Dr. Cunningham. And he's looking like an old school dad. Jamie looks really handsome. I literally like the Jamie family. I'm just making jokes, um, but I really do like them about him looking like an old school dad. Um, Little Jamie Walk is walking in, um, and let me just say, 
he needs therapy. I think his dad is just old school and trying to get him to grow up. That's hard to do when you haven't been taught healthy ways to do so. So I commend them both for taking the steps. Big Jamie introduces Little Jamie as his other half. Little Jamie in the confessional says, IDK, what to expect, but I'm here. And I love that for him. Good job for you, Little Jamie. The therapist starts by asking, who wants to tell me why you're here? Big Jamie says, this is my oldest son. We've always bumped heads. We've been bumping heads for years. And recently, we just had a big altercation that could have gotten physical. This show, and then the show, um, shows the flashback. The therapist wants to know what led up to this altercation. Little Jamie responds. He texts him for help with the ticket. The therapist asks, what was the response? Little Jamie says, he said, why do I need to pay a bill? And why you can't afford it. And I think that's a very logical question. And everything I probably knew already. So he basically already knew. that. It, 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 this is my issue with little Jamie. But whatever. Because his real issue is he doesn't want to be accountable for his actions. And he used real issues that people go through. Like suicide to get away from that. That's just my opinion, you guys. And I am not saying that his mental health is not important, but just really rewatch this show and pay attention to how he responds to big questions or very important questions that are being asked by, um, by the people that care about him. So I take issue with this because these new men need to grow up their way to coddle. That's all. So his dad says he can take care of his lifestyle, but not pay his ticket on a car that we bought you. And then says his girl, the only one that holds him down. While he says little Jamie is just while he says that little Jamie is just looking around. The therapist said, what did you hope to accomplish by yelling at him? Basically. Big Jamie responded and said, I was just mad and I had a few drinks. The therapist said, I'm not going to let you use that as, a, as an excuse. And I like that because, you know, make him hold himself accountable for his bad choice of words at his big grown age. Mind you, I really love the Jamies. I'm just, you know, speaking. So Jamie said, being that he come from being a retired detective, I guess I have a strict or stern way of raising his of raising my kids. The therapist says, but as an older adult, you can handle it a little bit differently as well. Little Jamie in the confessional says he's ecstatic hearing the doctor get on his dad because he did know how to because he didn't know how to say it. And he know him being a detective may affect the way that he was raised because his dad clearly had anger issues. That's what he said in his confessional. Um, and I obviously don't know any of these people, but personally, big Jamie reminds me of my dad and my uncles. So I know what his son means when he says that his dad has anger issues. The older men are a lot tougher, especially with their words. And the young boys don't know how to deal with the tough conversations. And that's just what I think. Um, there should be a healthy balance of teaching your son to be tough with love and not anger. They're learning though. So I can really appreciate this therapy session. I think this is a very good, you know, um, scene for people to see, especially families. <clears throat> so big Jamie said, um, he thinks his son, um, is still holding on to, uh, I'm sorry, Big Jamie has said he's holding on to when his son stole his car as a teen and got arrested for dumb stuff when he was younger. The doctor says um, it's because he is who he is. <clears throat> it has already built a lot of disappointment and anger. And he automatically go from zero to 100 because of who his son is. Jamie agrees and then says he needs to work on his delivery. And that's what um, and that's why he's there. The doctor wants to know what little Jamie needs from his dad to make him feel like a great person. And this, you guys just pay attention. Little Jamie makes an excuse and says he guess his dad just needs to trust that he is growing up and it's going to be a while before he can say he made it. The doctor asks though, 
what's standing in your way, you know, because I want to know what's standing in your way of growing and developing as a man. So we all know it's himself. He's in his own way. A lot of these men make excuses for their inadequacies and think the world's supposed to call to them while they tear a muck. And it just seems like his mom and dad ain't going and they tired. But I digress. The doctor says his own in his own the doctor says out his own mouth that he's standing in his own way. And um, the work starts with him being consistent, accountable and being honest and real. And he really, really needed to hear that. Y'all know the stuff we all beg men to do, but they do what little Jamie said in his confessional. Ignore and make excuses because that's what he said in his confessional. He said he had been hearing all that his entire life, basically, but he can receive it better now that a therapist is telling him whatever. Okay, we are hoping and praying, you know, because we need these men to grow up and do better in our community. The doctor says um, change takes time and acts does his uh, dad do things to make him put up a wall. And little Jamie doesn't really answer the question, but makes a statement saying, yeah, I mean, just times where I just felt like nothing, like I'm both worth nothing like what <sighs> and I, I'm literally you guys that's verbatim and I just don't understand how that even answers the question but moving on um I think he can't answer the question because his dad is only trying to hold him accountable in in but you know the only thing is it's in a mean way but he also finished that response and said, you know, since that's how his dad chose to respond to him, he also says, all right, well, I ain't going to do nothing since that's how you going to tell since that's what you're going to tell me. And that's just him not liking tough love and wanting to be coddled. So because your daddy won't coddle you and tell you nicely, you just going to be an asshole. Basically, ugh, goodness gracious. So, um. I don't know if they edit out what he said, but it just seems to be another excuse as to why he can't look in the mirror and face his actions and do better. But at this point, I was, you know, just so tired of the excuses. You know, I just wanted to move on because, you know, the doctor also talk about self-harm. And I don't want to discuss that because it's such a sensitive topic. So this is pretty much the ending of this review. And I will do the next part of the review, like the fight part in a different video because we're already past 30 minutes. So don't forget to thumbs up this video, subscribe. This is my first YouTube video here on this channel. And I hope to see more of you guys here on my channel.